Chairman Schiff, I'd like to begin with uh, Ambassador Sondland's lawsuit, and not so much on its merits. He can afford the attorney's fees. There was no grave injustice done there, even if he was lied to about reimbursement. But the discovery process in a civil case like that could go in some interesting and revealing directions. What might you expect from a lawsuit like that? Well, first of all, uh, these guys all deserve each other, Lawrence. Uh, <laughs> Gordon Sondland testified in the deposition to one thing, uh, and then he claimed to have a improvement of recollection. Uh, and then he gave the testimony you just excerpted there, uh, admitting openly there was a quid pro quo. Uh, apparently, it sounds from this pleading that uh, Secretary Pompeo was willing to reimburse his legal fees um, when he stuck to the line he gave in the deposition. But when he testified during the open hearings uh, and basically said everybody was in the loop and showed emails and other messages to Pompeo, showing that Pompeo was in on this scheme, uh, apparently that and his unwillingness to resign after the trial uh, led to Pompeo saying, I'm not going to re reimburse your fees anymore. Uh, you know, the litigation, uh, it, I guess, will depend on what the basis is for their failure to reimburse him. Uh, if they claim that Sondland was acting on his own, that he was some free radical, um, then Sondland might be able to get discovery to show, no, he was actually working with Rudy Giuliani, who was working with uh, Mike Pompeo, and they were all... Uh, they were all in the loop. Uh, so it's possible he could get discovery about what Pompeo was involved in, what he knew, and Giuliani. Um, but my guess is he just wants to get paid, uh, and he's looking for a settlement where he can get some money out of it. The, uh, the Pompeo angle here exposes him to uh, being subpoenaed to testify in a deposition under oath. That would mean Mike Pompeo under oath for the first time being forced to answer questions about any of this. Well, that's right. And, and of course, that could be very interesting uh, because uh, those documents that he did share uh, demonstrate that Pompeo was very much in on this. And of course, Mike Pompeo was listening in on that call between Donald Trump uh, and President Zelensky, uh, in which he was trying to strong arm the leader of Ukraine to help investigate the Bidens. So there's a lot we still don't know about this story. Uh, we don't know uh, all about, for example, the role of Mike Pence, who was also in the loop. Uh, and Pompeo would undoubtedly know about what the former vice president was aware of. So, yes, there could be some very interesting things come out in discovery, uh, which gives Pompeo at least a good incentive to try to settle this and, and pay Gordon Sondland to go away. And what was your reaction to what we learned in the newly unredacted, well, we, the public, learned in these newly unredacted documents about Paul Manafort uh, dealing with the Mueller investigation and the ways he kept lying to them about Konstantin Kalimnik? Well, it's very interesting because in two respects. First, you're right. Uh, it shows Manafort was a bigger liar than we knew, and we knew he was a pretty big liar to begin with. But it also shows the degree of collusion between the campaign chairman for Donald Trump and Russian intelligence. Uh, here, Manafort and Gates, uh, his deputy chairman, uh, are repeatedly giving an agent of uh, Russian intelligence internal polling data, internal strate st strategic documents um, about their efforts in battleground state states and key demographics within those battleground states. Uh, so, you know, this is going on while the Russians are doing a secret a social media operate, or operation to help the Trump campaign. Uh, and so it's hard to find something more graphic than that in terms of collusion between the Trump campaign and, and the Russians and the same Russian intelligence that's working on the social media campaign. But what's also interesting about it is uh, this is now the second federal judge in ordering these things to be unredacted who has essentially said Bill Barr was misleading the country, misleading the country by saying there was no evidence of collusion, misleading the country by saying that he was compelled to uh, conclude that you could not indict the president on obstruction. Um, and he's also, the judge is also saying that, that essentially Barr has been uh, dishonest with the court about what that memo is about. Uh, it's not about just deliberations. Apparently it's about spin. Uh, and it's for that reason, because it's about how do they spin this pre-decision, this predetermination that they weren't going to uh, indict the president no matter what. How do they spin that 
that's not something that can be concealed from the public. So it's interesting at many levels.